Komumai. Uh, my name is Pastor Ron Taylor, and this is my wife, Vanessa. Aloha! Well, thanks for joining us for our Bible study today. It's, uh, we are doing the Amazing Facts Study Guide number 5, Keys for a Happy Marriage. So this one should be a fun one here. So uh, what we like to do, we always like to uh, pray first before we go through our Bible study. So let's uh, bow our heads. Heavenly Father, I want to thank you so much again for this opportunity to dive into your words. Uh, we look forward to what you have to teach us through the study guide, uh, Keys for a Happy Marriage. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Alright, so as we're going along, so I'm just going to read through here. And uh, if you want to look at the Bible, well, look through with your own Bible, just go ahead and uh, hit the pause button. And then you can look for the verses in your own Bible. And also you can follow along. Um, I'll put the um, website link for this Bible study guide on the bottom in the description as well. Alright, so let us go into the study. Keys for a happy marriage. So let me start reading here. It says, They are the tragedies of divorce. Bitter spouses, broken promises, and confused children. Don't let this happen to your family. You know? Whether your marriage is going through tough times or is experiencing marital bliss, or even if you're not yet married but are considering it. But the Bible, the Bible offers proven guidance to help your marriage last. It's advice from God who created and ordained marriage. If you tried everything else, why not give Him a chance? All right, so we're gonna, we have here uh, 17 keys for a happy marriage. So, what is the first key? The first key is establish your own private home. Establish your own private home. So Genesis 2:24 says, "A man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and they shall become one flesh." In the comment section here it says, God's principle is that a married couple should move out of their parents' home and establish their own, even if finances require something modest, such as a one-room apartment. A husband and wife should decide this together as one and remain firm even if someone opposes. Many marriages would be improved if this principle were carefully followed. So, uh, Vanessa and I, we, when we were married, uh, we did buy a townhouse, affordable housing. Thank goodness we were able to purchase that as a small uh, two-bedroom. It was still nice, so we had uh, the two of us and then our kids later on. Uh, right now, we are, well, we sold our townhouse so we can go into ministry, and now we are living, well, we have a house actually with my parents' home, but we built a separate uh, home on the property, so it's kind of like we still have our own place but anyhow uh, yeah it's always best to have your own uh, apartment or house whether it's, it doesn't matter if it's big or small just having your own place it makes a big big difference all right number two number two says continue your courtship and then it says in the Bible here first Peter 4 8 above all things have fervent love for one another for love will cover a multitude of sins. And then it says, uh, Proverbs 31, verse 28, her husband praises her. And then it also says, 1 Corinthians 7, verse 34, she who is married cares how she may please her husband. And then it says, Romans 12, 10, be kindly affectionate to one another in honor, giving preference to one another. All right, in the comment section it says continue or revive your courtship into your married life. Successful marriages don't just happen, they must be developed. You have to work on it, right? Uh, don't take one another for granted on the resulting monotony could harm your marriage. Keep your love for one another growing by expressing it to each other. Otherwise love might fade and you could drift apart. Love and happiness are not found by seeking them for yourself, but rather by giving them to others. So spend as much time as possible doing things together. Uh, learn to greet each other with enthusiasm. 
uh, relax, visit, sightsee, and eat together. And don't overlook the little courtesies, encouragements, and affectionate acts. <laughs> affectionate acts. <laughs> uh, surprise each other with gifts of favors. <laughs> try this out of love each other. Uh, don't try to take out more of your marriage than you put into it. Lack of love is the biggest destroyer of marriage. So you got to always keep it fresh and do things together. Go out. Uh, we go to the beach a lot, go swimming, or go visit the zoo together, or museum. Just do something, you know, like you're still dating. All right, uh, key for a happier marriage, number three. Remember that God joins you together in marriage. Uh, Matthew 19, verse 5 and 6. Matthew 19, verse 5 and 6 says, For this reason a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined, by, joined to his wife. So then they are no longer two, but one flesh. Therefore, what God has joined together, let no man separate. The comment section here says, Has love nearly disappeared from your home? Ooh, I hope not. While the devil wants to break apart your marriage by tempting you to give up, don't forget that God himself joined you together in marriage. And he desires that you stay together and be happy. Uh, he will bring happiness and love into your lives if you will obey His divine commandments. With God, all things are possible. That's in Matthew chapter 19, verse 26. Don't despair. God's Spirit can change your heart and your spouse's heart if you will ask and let Him. Okay. Okay, so key number four. Guard your thoughts. So it says in Proverbs 23, verse 7, As he thinks in his heart, so he is. And then in Exodus 20, verse 17, you shall not covet your neighbor's wife. Uh, Proverbs 4, 23 says, keep your heart with all diligence. But, oh, then this is a four out of it, spring the issues of life. And then Philippians 4, 8, whatever things are true, noble, just, pure, lovely, of good report, Meditate on these things. You know. The comment says, The wrong kind of thinking can profoundly harm your marriage. The devil will tempt you with thoughts like, Our marriage was a mistake. She doesn't understand me. I can't take much more of this. We can always divorce if necessary. I'll go home to mother or father. Or he smiled at that woman. This kind of thinking is dangerous because your thoughts ultimately govern your actions. Avoid saying, seeing, reading, or hearing anything that or associating with anyone who suggests being unfaithful. Stay away. Um, thoughts uncontrolled are like an automobile left in neutral on a steep hill that could be a disaster. So you just end up falling. All right, number five. Never go to bed angry with one another. Okay, in uh, Ephesians chapter 4 verse 26 says, Do not let the sun go down on your wrath. And in James 5 6, Confess your trespasses to one another. Philippians 3 13, Forgetting those things which are behind. And then Ephesians 4 32 says, Be kind to one another, uh, tender hearted, forgiving one another, even as God in Christ forgave you. The comment says, To remain angry over hurts and grievances, big or small, can be dangerous. Unless addressed in a timely manner, even little problems can become set in your mind as convictions can adversely affect your outlook on life. This is why God said to let your anger cool before going to bed. Big enough to forgive and to say, I'm sorry. After all, no one is perfect, right? And you are both on the same team, so be gracious enough to admit a mistake when you make it. Besides, making up is a very pleasant experience with unusual powers to draw marriage pattern or partners to closer together. God suggests it and it works. 
Yep, never go to bed angry. Especially, you know, when you go to bed angry, you're not going to be able to sleep anyway, so might as well make up, right? Okay, let's go to number six. Key number six. Keep Christ at the center of your home. Okay. Uh, Psalms 127, verse 1. Psalm 127, verse 1 says, Unless the Lord builds the house, they labor in vain who build it. The Lord got to be there, right? Um, Proverbs 3, verse 6, And all your ways acknowledge Him, and He shall direct your path. And then Philippians 4, 7 says, And the peace of God which surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. That's one of my favorites there. And then in the comment section it says, This really is the greatest principle because it's the one that enables all the others. The vital ingredient of happiness in the home is not diplomacy, strategy, or an effort to overcome problems, but rather in a union with Christ. Hearts filled with Christ's love will not be far apart or for long with Christ in the home. A marriage has greater chance at being successful. Jesus can wash away the bitterness and disappointment and restore love and happiness in your home. Christ has to be in your home. Alright, let's go to key number seven. Pray together. Okay, Matthew 26, verse 41 says, Watch and pray, and let, and lest you enter into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. Uh, Matthew 26, 41 says, Pray for one another. James 5, 16 says, If any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask of God, who gives liberally. Why don't you show that picture in there? Bring it up. Mm -hmm. A couple praying there. Hopefully you can see it. But it says in the comment, pray with one another. Very important. This is a wonderful activity that will help your marriage succeed beyond all your wildest dreams. Kneel before God and ask for true love for one another and for forgiveness, for strength, and for wisdom. For and for the solution to problems. God will answer. You won't be automatically cured of every fault, but God will, but you will, but God will have greater access to change your heart and actions. Yeah. Yeah, God can yeah. change. So we pray together and God will help. Alright, let's go to number eight. Agree that divorce is not the answer. Nope. Um, Matthew 19 verse 6 says, what God has joined, let no man separate. Matthew 19, 9 says, Whoever divorces his wife except for sexual immorality and marries another commits adultery. Whoever marries her is who is divorced commits adultery. And then uh, Romans chapter 7, verse 2 says, woman, The woman who has a husband is bound by the law to her husband as long as he lives. Uh, comment here. The Bible says that the ties of marriage are meant to be unbreakable. Divorce is allowed only in cases of adultery. And I would want to add that uh, there's abuse in the family as well. And this is, but even then, it is not demanded. Forgiveness is always better than divorce, even in the case of unfaithfulness. When God ordained the first marriage in Eden, He designed it for life, for a lifetime. Thus, marriage vows are among the most solemn and binding for a person to take on. But remember, God meant for marriage to elevate our lives and meet our needs in every way. Harboring thoughts of divorce will tend to destroy your marriage, so don't even think it. Divorce is always destructive and almost never a solution to the problems. Instead, it usually creates more problems, financial troubles, Grieving children, etc. All right, number nine. Keep the family circle closed tightly. All right, Exodus 20, verse 14. You shall not commit adultery. No, no, no. Amen. All right, and in uh, Proverbs 31, verse 11 and 12, the heart of her husband safely trusts her, 
she does him good and not evil all the days of her life. Uh, Malachi 2, verse 14, The Lord has been witness between you and the wife of your youth with whom you have dealt treachery, treacherously. Uh, Proverbs chapter 6, Keep you from the evil woman. Do not lust after her beauty in your heart, nor let her allure you with her eyelids. Can a man take fire to his bosom and clothes not be burned? So is he who goes into his neighbor's wife. Whoever touches her shall not be innocent. Comment. Private family matters should never be shared with others outside your home. Not even parents. A person outside the marriage to sympathize with or listen to complaints can be used by the devil to estrange the hearts of a husband and a wife. Solve your private home problems privately. No one else except a minister or a marriage counselor should be involved. Always be trustful with each other and never keep secrets. Mm -hmm. Avoid telling jokes at the expense of your spouse's feelings and vigorously defend each other. Adultery will always hurt you and everyone else in your family. God who knows our mind body and feeling said you shall not commit adultery if flirtations have already begun break it off immediately or shadows could settle over your life that cannot be easily lifted all right number 10 God describes love make it your daily goal to experience it hmm. all right first Corinthians chapter 13 Love suffers long and is kind. Love does not envy. Love does not parade itself. Is not puffed up. Does not behave rudely. Does not seek its own. Is not provoked. Thinks no evil. Does not rejoice in iniquity. Sorry. <laughs> but rejoices in the truth. Bears all, believes all things. Hopes all things. Endures all things. All right. That's 1 Corinthians chapter 13, the love chapter. As the comment says, This Bible passage is one of God's greatest description of love. Read it again and again. Have you made these words a part of your marriage experience? True love is not a mere sentimental impulse, but rather a holy principle that involves every aspect of your married life. With true love, your marriage stands a far greater chance for success. Without it, marriage will likely fail quickly. All right, key number 11. Remember that criticism and nagging destroys love. Mm. Colossians chapter 3 verse 19 says, Husbands, love your wives and do not be bitter towards them. And then Proverbs 21 verse 19 says, Better to dwell in the wilderness than with a contentious and angry wife. Uh, Proverbs 27 15 A continual dripping on a very rainy day and a contentious woman are alike. Uh, Matthew 7 Why do you look at the speck splinter in your brother's eye but do not consider the plank whole bo the whole board in your own eye? Uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 13 verse 4 Love suffers long and is kind Love does not envy. Love does not parade itself. The comment here says, Stop criticizing. Stop nagging. And finding fault in your partner. Your spouse might lack much, but criticism won't help. Expecting perfection will bring bitterness to you and your spouse. Overlook faults and hunt for the good things. Look for the good stuff. Don't try to reform, control, or compel your partner. You will destroy love. Only God can change people. That's his job. A sense of humor, a cheerful heart, kindness, patience, affection will banish many of your marriage problems. Try to make your spouse happy rather than good. And the good will likely take care of itself. 
the secret of a successful marriage lies not in having the right partner, but in being the right partner. That's important to remember. Amen. you got to do your part. All right, see you number 12. Do not overdo in anything. Be temperate. Okay, uh, 1 Corinthians 9, verse 25. Everyone who competes for the prize is temperate in all things. Uh, 1 Corinthians 13. Love does not seek its own, and in parentheses is a selfish advantage. And then 1 Corinthians 10, verse 31. Whether you eat or drink or whatever you do, do all to the glory of God. Uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 27. I discipline my body and bring it into subjection. And then 2 Thessalonians chapter 3, verse 10. If anyone will not work, neither shall he eat. Hebrews chapter 13, verse 4. Marriage is an honorable thing, and the bed undefiled. And Romans chapter 6, verse 12 and 13 says, Do not let sin reign in your heart. <laughs> Sorry, let me start that over. Romans 6, verse 12 and 13. Do not let sin reign in your mortal body, that you should... Obey it in its lust. And do not present your members as instruments of unrighteousness to sin. Wow. Okay, a uh, comment. Overdoing will ruin your marriage. So will underdoing. Time with God, work, love, rest, exercise, play, meals, social contact must be balanced in a marriage. Or something will snap. There has to be this balance, right? Too much work and a lack of rest, proper food and exercise can lead to lead a person to be critical, intolerant, and negative. The Bible also recommends a temperate sex life. First Corinthians seven, verse three through six, because degrading and intemperate sex acts can destroy love and respect for one another. Social contact with others is essential. Uh, true happiness won't be found in isolation. We must learn to laugh and enjoy wholesome good times. To be serious all the time is dangerous. So you got to have your fun, right? Um, overdoing or underdoing in anything weakens the mind, body, conscious, and ability to love and respect one another. Don't let intemperance damage your marriage. So I'll be sure you balance your life, your marriage, right? Uh, let's go to number 13. 13. Respect each other's personal rights and privacy. Okay, so 1 Corinthians chapter 13 again, verse 4 through 7, says, Love suffers long and is kind. Love does not envy, does not behave rudely, does not seek its own, uh, parentheses, does not seek its own in selfishness, does not rejoice in iniquity, Believes all things, hope all things, endure all things. And then Romans 12 verse 10 says, Be kindly affectionate to one another with brotherly love in honor, giving preference to one another. Comment says, Each spouse has a God-given right to certain personal privacy. Do not tamper with each other's wallets or purses, personal email, and other private property unless given permission. The right to privacy and quietude when preoccupied should be respected. Your husband or wife even has a right to be wrong part of the time and is entitled to an off day without being given the third degree. Marriage partners do not own each other and should never try to force personality changes. Only God can make such changes. Mm -hmm. Confidence and trust in one another is essential for happiness. So don't check up on each other constantly. Spend less time trying to figure out your spouse and more time trying to please her or him. This works wonders. All right. Number 14. Be clean, modest, orderly, and dutiful. Okay, so First Timothy 2, verse 9 says, In like manner, also, that women adorn themselves in modest apparel, 
Then it says here, Proverbs chapter 31. She willingly works with her hands. My wife likes to fix a lot of things all the time, <laughs> constantly. She also rises while it is yet night and provides food for her household and a terrific cook, by the way. <laughs> she watches over the ways of her household and does not eat the bread of idleness. She's always on the go. <laughs> be clean. Isaiah 52, 11. And let all things be done decently and in order. That's 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 40. If anyone does not provide for his own, and especially for those of his household, he has denied the faith and is worse than an unbeliever. Ooh. 1 Timothy 5, 8. And it says in Hebrews 6, 12, Do not become sluggish or do not become lazy. The comment section says laziness and disorder can be used by the devil to destroy your respect and affection for one another and thus harm your marriage. Modest attire and clean, well-groomed bodies are important for both husband and wife. That's why I take lots of showers with a nice, well-scented soap so my wife will still love me. <laughs> Both partners should take care to create a home environment that is clean and orderly as this will bring peace and calmness. So we always try to keep our place nice and tidy and uh, not have too many things because the uh, less we have, the easier to clean, right? Um, a lazy, shiftless spouse who does not contribute to the household is a disadvantage to the family and it is displeasing to God. Everything done for one another should be done with care and respect. Carelessness in these seemingly small matters has caused division in countless homes. All right, so uh, be clean, modest, orderly, and now let's go to number 15. Determined to speak softly and kindly. Proverbs 15 verse 1 says, a soft answer turns away wrath, but a harsh word stirs up anger. And then it says in uh, Ecclesiastes 9, 9, live joyfully with the wife whom you love. Mm -hmm. And then it says in 1 Corinthians 13, 11, I became a man, I put away childish things and I'm still working on putting away childish things you know you know guys right so anyhow the comment says always speak softly and kindly to your spouse even in disputes decisions made with angry tired or discouraged are unreliable anyway so it's best to relax and let anger cool before speaking and when you do speak, let it always be quietly and lovingly. Harsh, angry words can crush your spouse's desire to please you. So speak nice and tenderly. Okay? Alright, let's go to number 16. Be reasonable in money matters. Okay, 1 Corinthians 13 again. Love does not envy. And in parentheses it says, is not possessive, does not behave rudely, does not seek his own, or it says in parentheses, selfish advantage. And then it says Second Corinthians 9, 7, God loves a cheerful giver. Mm -hmm. right. So it says, comment, household income should be shared in a marriage with each partner having the right to spend a certain portion as desired and according to the family budget. Separate bank accounts tend to remove the opportunity to depend, de to depend trust, which is vital for a healthy marriage. So we have uh, one joint account together, and it, and it says money management is a team effort. Both should be involved, but one should take ultimate responsibility. So in our household, um, so that would be me who I write the checks and everything else, but we make decisions together but for uh, money matters uh, says, good at that. <laughs> <laughs> the money management roles should be determined by personal abilities and preferences 
All right, let's go to number 17. Talk things over freely with one another. All right, so it says in 1 Corinthians 13, 4, Love suffers long and is kind. Love does not envy. Love does not parade itself. It is not puffed up. Um, Proverbs 15:32. He who disdains instruction despises his own soul. Uh, Proverbs 26:12. Do you see a man wise in his own eyes? There is more hope for a fool than for him. Wow. All right. So comment here says few things will strengthen your marriage more than an open discussions on major decisions. Changing a job, purchasing something expensive, and other life decisions should involve both husband and wife. Whenever you make big life-changing uh, decisions, it should be together in agreement. And differing opinions should be respected. Talking things over will avoid many blunders that could greatly weaken your marriage. If, after much discussion and earnest prayers, opinions still differ, the wife should submit to her husband's decision. Ooh, I like that. <laughs> but no, I'm just kidding. It also says, which should be motivated by his deep love for his wife. So you're making this decision based on your love for your wife, right? And his responsibility for her well-being. So it's important that you do it out of love for your wife. So that's in Ephesians chapter 5, verse 22 through 25. Okay, number 18 is actually a question. 18. Do you want your marriage to reflect God's unselfish, committed, and joyful love for you? Of course we do. Yes. All right. Got to have God in our marriage. Amen. All right. So that's it for our study. Number five amazing facts, keys for a happy marriage. We're so glad that you joined us. and. Uh, you got through with it with us, and it was pretty good. Um, lots of good advice in here from the Bible. So if you enjoyed it, please go ahead and click the like button. And uh, if you haven't subscribed yet, go ahead and subscribe to us as well, so you can get the notification of our upcoming videos. And uh, if you want to follow us on our for our personal life, we do have a YouTube channel called Our Our Three Island Life. So we actually so we travel between three islands, so Oahu, Manai, and Molokai. So you can see our daily activities and so forth. Um, so yeah, if you want to follow along, go ahead and search for that as well. All right, so well, again, I hope you enjoyed it. And I uh, look forward to seeing you again for our next Bible study guide, which will be, be number six. All right, so before we uh, post the video here, why don't we just close with the word of prayer. Heavenly Father, I want to thank you again so much for this wonderful study guide about marriage. Marriage is so important, Lord. and for you, it is everything. Um, you, you made the marriage possible for us and for whoever is watching. So I want to thank you for that, Father, because you are the one who uh, binds us together. So continue to be with those who are watching as well. May you give them a blessing and maybe apply what was learned uh, through this Bible study. We thank you in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right. Thank you again for watching, and we'll see you for our next episode. Aloha and God loves you. Aloha. Heart. Oh, heart. Oh, because this is marriage. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Bye. Bye.